Heart is a place. Qalb is a thing. Qalb is a Qalb is a It's something. But Sadr is a place. Allah did not say in the ayah, He whispers and retreats and constantly does so for evil in the hearts of people. He didn't use the word hearts. What word did He use? The chests. The chests. There's a difference between saying He whispers in the hearts and He whispers in the chests. The imagery, if you want to put it in the form of an image to help you understand it, think of it like this. The heart is like a castle. And around the castle, there's some open real estate. There's a yard, there's a, there's a front yard, side yard, backyard. Open real estate. And all of this real estate and the heart is inside your chest. Allah said He gave him access to the chest, but not access to what? Not the heart. So he's in the front yard, or he's in the backyard. He's all around, but he's not where yet? He's not in the heart, the heart is locked. Door's locked. And the only one who has the keys to that door is who? You. If you open that door, he's waiting. He's constantly there. You waswishu fi sudur in nas, hoping one day he can enter the qalb. But to, if you let him in the qalb, what's gonna happen then? If you don't let him in the qalb, you could say isti'adha and he'll stay outside. He won't disappear, he'll take a step back, maybe quiet for a few seconds, maybe find a couple of hours later, come back to you again. But if you let him in, what happens? Let me tell you the contrast. People who have iman, people who have iman, you know what's beautiful to them? Faith itself, remembering Allah itself. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah beautified iman for you and He actually made it beloved to you and He beautified it inside your hearts. You find beauty in iman. You find beauty in this belief. Now, imagine what happens when shaitan makes his way in. What's gonna happen? Are you gonna find beauty in iman anymore? No. You'll find beauty in something else. So Allah says, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ when shaitan makes his way into your heart, evil deeds start looking beautiful. They start looking tempting. They start looking good. If the remembrance of Allah is in your heart, evil deeds will look ugly. They will وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرُ وَالْفُسُوقُ وَالْعِسْيَانِ Allah made disbelief and corruption and disobedience disgusting to you. If you have iman in your heart, those things look disgusting. You're not even tempted. You could drive by a club and say, Astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What a, face to, what, a, what a waste of humanity. What a disgrace to the, the son of Adam. And he was honored with such intellect and what worse life than animals they live. You would spit at it. But if shaitan made his way, his way in, you're like, hey, well, I'll just pull over for a little while. Now it's starting to look beautiful. This is the difference between the one who's let him in and the one who hasn't let him in. Where do we stand? When we see something evil, are we tempted by it? Are we disgusted by it? Tells us how much we're remembering Allah, what the state of iman is. If iman is beautified, disbelief, kufr, corruption will look evil. And if shaitan has finally found an entrance, then the other way around. So Allah gave is a mercy of Allah. He gave him access to the chest, but not access to the heart. That is our responsibility. That is our responsibility. May Allah give us the ability to protect our hearts. Who is better at whisper, the human being or the jinn? Who takes the primary role? The jinn. Also, the waswasa of the jinn, huwa al-asl, as the ulama comment. It is, the, it is original. In other words, if a human being is whispering something evil to you, it may or may not be his original idea. He may self have plagiarized it from a shaitan, <laughs> from a jinn to begin with. But when a jinn does waswasa, it is his own. It's his original. So the source is mentioned first, min al-jinnah, and then the secondary, wan nas. And here we learn something else, vehicles. Shaitan uses vehicles. This min al-jinnah can be istikhdaman also. What that means is shayati, Iblis uses jinns and uses people to conduct his waswasa. He uses them to conduct his waswasa. So you know that waswasa of shaitan can come to you through your best friend. You hear his voice on the phone. You don't hear Iblis's voice. But you know what? He's at that point, he's a puppet for Iblis. And he especially does this with kuffar, not as much with Muslims, but especially with kuffar. Young man is going to college, trying to guard his, his, his shame. He's a good looking guy, you know, he decides, man, these girls give me too much attention, I gotta grow a beard, because you grow a beard, automatic girl deterrent, right? So he grows a beard, to, and by the way, I know I'm not gonna pass a fatwa on beard, but I tell the younger guys here, if you're going to college, grow a beard, it'll save you from a lot of trouble. You're just gonna look in the mirror and say, I'm gonna go to a party looking like that. I look like I'm trying to imitate Allah's messenger, then I'm gonna go to the party. You'll be ashamed of yourself, you won't be able to go. So protect yourself, grow a beard. It's a, I'm not giving you a fatwa, this is a psychological deterrent. You know? So anyways, this guy is growing a beard, he's trying to protect himself, he's, he keeps his eyes low. 
Shaitan doesn't come to him. You know what he does? He goes to this non-Muslim girl and says, Hey, go talk to him. So she comes over. Did you do the assignment from last week? Innocent question. Because I think you're really smart. Uh-oh. Now it's starting to get a little dangerous. He'll come to him. For, and now if he starts giving it some thought, then he opened the door. Now he comes to him. You see that? He'll come. He'll use people like puppets to give waswasa to you. He'll use people like puppets. And now he doesn't even have to use people. Now he's got websites and TV channels that do it for him. He's got his work on DVD. You know? It just doesn't, it automated. He's, you know, he, he could kick back and relax and watch, even though he doesn't ever kick back, like we said. But we facilitated his job for him through modern, you know, mass media. Mass media can be used for great things, but for the most part, it's being used for evil things. You know, for evil things. So this is, you know, min sharril waswas al khanna, min al jinnati wan nas rather. They could be from the jinn, and they could also be from the people. But the source is al waswas. And then these guys, these are being used. So they're in a secondary position. Essentially the word Rabb necessitates the existence of an authority. You obey him because he is your Rabb. U'budu Rabbakum. You know, enslave yourselves to your master. Now, why is that important? وَالْأَمْرُ الْآخِرْ أَنَّهُ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ الطَّاعَةِ يَعْنِي هَذَا الْإِعْلَامِ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ الطَّاعَةِ لِأَنَّكَ إِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ بِشَخْصٍ تُطِيعُهُ وَلَا تَعْصِيهِ فَكَيْفَ تَسْتَعِينُ بِهِ وَتَعْصِيهِ how can it be that you're asking His help while disobeying Him? You can't ask Allah's help. You, don't, you would never ask anybody's help while disobeying them and disregarding them at the same time. What we are learning here is if you really want Allah to protect you, what must you be doing first? You must be obeying Him. So the, the discussion begins with the command of Allah and you, you complying with that command. What that does is it necessitates in you the need to be in obedience to Allah for the protection to actually come before you. You're entering not only into the protection of Allah, but also into the obedience of Allah. From the, from the, you know, I seek refuge from the evil of all creation, or everything that's been created. He said, ma khalaqa, what He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, created. Why is that important? Because whatever harm the creation can cause you, know that the one who created it has more power. He can save you from that harm, because He's the one in the end who created it. So His reference, him getting credit for the, being the creator gives him power over whatever harm the creation may be able to cause. The second is shar is not attributed to Allah. Shar is attributed to khalq. And ulama talk about this in depth and it becomes a philosophical issue, but I'll give you the gist of it. People keep it really simple. The bottom line in Islamic studies when it comes to the concept of shar is that evil is not actually an entity in and of itself. It is only considered the lack of good. Just like darkness, you know the imagery of Tawheed and Shirk, darkness and light? Darkness actually doesn't exist. What actually exists? Light. When you don't have light, what do you have? Darkness. So darkness in and of itself isn't an actual entity. It's, it's goodness that's the entity, and a lack of goodness is what's, what darkness is. So evil in the end is what? A lack of good. But this ayah has profound lessons in it because Allah left the, the language open and universal. Min sharri ma khalaq, He didn't reduce it to shayateen. The evil in the next surah is sharril waswas al khannas, a very specific creation. But when you say ma khalaq, whatever he created, from the harm of whatever he created, we learn from this that there is no creation on the face of this earth. No creation on the face of the, that doesn't come without a flaw. The only one free of flaw is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else will have something missing. Something will be missing. Some element of shar is possible from everything. Think of the most amazing creations of Allah like the sun. So many benefits from the sun. Are there harms from the sun too? So many benefits from water. Is there harm in water also? So many benefits in the earth. Are there harms in the earth too? So many benefits of the sky. Are there harms that come from the sky also? Everything Allah has created has an element. It can have harm in it. It can have harm in it. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from the potential harmful elements of everything. Things that are not that are beyond our perception. You know, a car, very beneficial, can it be harmful? Can you die in an accident? Can you get in, you know, can you put yourself in great difficulty? Yeah, it's possible. So all creations have that element of harm, potential harm in them, and so we ask Allah Azza wa Jal his protection from all of them. Min Sharri Ma Khalaq. For first of all, Allah is sending, He didn't say, مِنَ الْغَاسِقِ إِذَا وَقَى مِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ From the evil of the dark. In other words, Allah is letting us know that there are harms that are inherently present in the dark. 
the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would advise the Sahaba not to go out at night. In some narrations, he'd say, if you knew what I knew, you wouldn't go out at night. The shayateen meet in the oceans at night. They come out at night. And you know, in our society, when is it time to act like the devil? Right? It's Friday night, Saturday night. And you, if you don't believe that there are harms that come, up, come at night, watch the documentaries that have been done about the ERs across America. You know when they are filled? Friday and Saturday night. They're filled. Car accidents, people killing each other after a couple of beers, drugs, alcohol, you name it. You name it. All of it, all that evil occurs when? At night.